Well, hello, good people, I'm Dmitry. In this video, we'll be answering one simple question that required a lot of precise testing. And that is exactly what type of cooling performance you can expect from different sized all-in-one coolers. So 120, 240, 280, and 360, when we standardize for noise, and heat loads. That's the important bit because running the coolers at 100% doesn't give you apples to apples comparison. So yeah, this should be fun. This is actually something a lot of you have been asking for. And in the last 12 months or so, we've been revamping and evolving our testing methodologies for monitors, notebooks, and air coolers. For example, in our most recent heat sink review, check it out over here, we took some steps to deliver noise normalized results across different decibel readings and also at different heat loads. And all that led us to this video. We'll be stepping back into doing more all-in-one cooler content and also with methodologies that we want to implement and roll out uh, moving forward. Forward, so that is doing real apples to apples comparisons when we take into account noise and different heat loads. For that, I have to thank Fantex for making this video possible since they sent over their entire range of their new Glacier 1 MP all-in-one coolers that all use Aztec's brand new Gen 7 pump design that you'll start seeing a lot more in other products over the next year. This not only will allow us to test identically equipped products because we have the entire range of the Aztec pump design and the same fans from Fantex, therefore eliminating any variables but the size of the radiator itself, but also give us a good baseline for future water cooling reviews. And if you want to see anything different or slightly revised in the future, definitely let us know, we always listen. So in short, we'll go over the new Glacier 1 MP series, talk about its design, and then do a deep dive into the performance, the cooling performance that is for different size all-in-one coolers at different heat loads. This should be fun, let's begin right after this. It is finally here. Your screen enemies are not ready. Listen to this. The new SteelSeries Aerox 3 wireless and wired mice. Super lightweight for deleting heads and cool shell design too. Super mesh USB-C cable with fast charging. Insane battery life for up to 200 hours. Dual wireless connection for flexibility. The mouse is IP54 rated for water and dust resistance. The TrueMove sensor is incredible with switches of up to 80 million clicks. I mean, come on, give the hand what it wants. Check out the new SteelSeries Aerox 3 mice down below. All right, so this is the entire Glacier 1 MP lineup, available in 240, 280, and 360 variants, all black design with white blades on the fans. And we also have this full white version of the 240mm all-in-one cooler with white fans, radiator, and tubes, plus a couple of halo fan frames to bring a lot more bling to the DRGB space. I call that one dirge. We'll also be using an Acetec Gen 7 120mm all-in-one cooler for testing, since Fantex is not offering a 120mm version yet, but it is equipped with the same fan as the other coolers. And by the way, they all use 27mm thick aluminum radiators. As for prices, we have a range from 125 to 170, with the MPH model standing out just because of the bling. Some standout features include the infinity mirror design. It is magnetic and super easy to install. It also cuts down on the pumped noise, since it has sound damage dampening material at the base, and my goodness, does it look very good. The color is vibrant and beautifully uniform below the tempered glass window. The Fantex logos would accommodate an upside down orientation as well, and it connects to a five volt addressable header on your motherboard or into a Fantex lighting hub slash enclosure. The infinity mirror has a cool distance center fade, and it's actually a very low profile cap. Believe it or not, this is one of the few all-in-one coolers where the tubes exiting the pump do not interfere with my memory, like they're not like slightly bending the memory module, which is great due to the new rotary uh, fittings. The tubes are 400 millimeters in length and are pretty flexible with sleeved and braided exterior. And each cooler comes with three tube clips that help to collect and clean up the look of the tubes inside your case. All of the fans are PWM, of course, with high static pressure blade design, 2200 and 2000 RPM on 120 and 140 fans respectively, all with double-sided rubber dampeners. And my favorite part is the daisy chain cable design, letting you connect all the fans into one fan header on the motherboard with a 500 millimeter extension included. Finally, the installation should be familiar to most if you ever used an all-in-one cooler before because it's the standard Acetec patented design compatible with both AMD and Intel with an easy swap between the brackets on the pump. We have pre-applied thermal compound at the base, but good on Fantex for including a tube of thermal paste for future use. Now it is advised to connect a pump PWM cable into a separate fan or AIO header on the motherboard, but if you only have the one available, you can use a splitter cable to 
connect both the fans and the pump into a single header. And now that everything is set up, let's talk performance. As for the test system, it's the same one we've used for air cooling reviews within a closed case and an Intel 10980XE that's being set to constant wattage levels of 120 watts, 165 watts, and 260 watts. This allows us to test a variety of thermal loads representing stock, overclocked and really high water CPUs. For each of these all-one coolers, the tests were run for 25 minutes at full load, just so the liquid inside the all-one cooler could normalize. Then we had a 25 minute cool down with fans at 100%, just so we could normalize things back to default. Now, one quick thing to mention about acoustical performance for all the ones is that when we are talking about air cooling with heat sinks, it's pretty straightforward, right? All you have to worry about is the fan noise. Whereas with all one coolers, you have to worry about the pump aside from the fans and maybe giving it a break in period of a few hours or even several days where the bubbles inside the system could disperse throughout the system and then normalized acoustic testing can be done. Either way, this Acetec Gen 7 pump is one of the quietest we've seen so far. And in our testing room, our noise floor without anything on is a constant 34 decibels. So if the pump is below that, it will not be picked up by our meter. Even with the fans at their minimum safe speed, the pump noise only has a small impact on the acoustical results up until it reaches the 60% mark. After that point, the noise footprint does start to increase but what does that mean for temperatures? Let's set the fan speed on each of these coolers to 100% and hit them with a constant 260 watts of heat uh, to see if pump speed has any effect. And these results actually had us all really surprised, but let me explain what's going on. It looks like the Gen 7 pump is efficient enough to properly feed the 120, the 240, and the 280 mm radiators with enough liquid flow for optimal cooling at just 50% speed. And increasing pump speed beyond that doesn't really help with temperatures. The only small exception is with a 360 rad, where at 50%, it still seems to be that optimal flow rate to balance noise and efficiency, but there are some tiny and almost insignificant improvements beyond that. Based on that information, we'll run the pump speed at 50%. So let's get into the results, but first check out that video if you want to see how these results are presented. So for our 120 watt test, this is meant to show performance on almost all current Intel and AMD CPUs. And sure, there's gonna be some outliers like the 10900K and even some Ryzen 7 5800X chips that seem to run really hot, but this should still cover the vast majority of users here. With the 120 and 240 coolers, you can see that at most, they're separated by just four degrees Celsius across the entire noise range. Even when running at maximum speed, the single fan radiator only hit 44 decibels, while the dual fan design did offer a bit more performance, but it hit a much higher noise level too. Jumping up to a larger size, the 360 and 280 all-in-one coolers really don't give any additional performance benefits versus the 240. Even against the smaller 120 version, we're looking at the maximum delta of just six degrees Celsius. You also notice the glaze here to 80s line extends a bit further towards the 50 decibels and that's because its fans are actually a lot louder at full speed than the 120 mil fans. All this goes to show you three things. Number one is running fans at much higher RPM and even at 100% has diminishing returns. For number two, even a good 120 mm all-in-one cooler can give you amazing performance at low noise levels. And for number three, while a 280 or 360 all-in-one cooler might look amazing inside your system, the kind of waste of money from a performance per dollar standpoint at 120 watts, that's important, but what if we dial things up? Here we're starting to see a bit more separation between the 120 and 240 designs while running in the same decibel levels, but still don't let that fool you. There's still only six degrees at most separating these two coolers. Personally, I think that points towards how good the new Acetec design is since the 120 AAO only hit a maximum of 68 degrees at a super low 35 decibels. Adding the larger all-in-ones doesn't really show anything different from the 120 results since none of their dual fan radiators are anywhere near their thermal limit. And basically that leads to pretty comparable performance between all of them and we're seeing diminishing returns above a certain fan speed. And so far these results have been a little bit uneventful to be honest, but let's separate the man from the boys, okay? And step up that wattage limit to 260 watts, which is not really representative of like everything that's out there, but an overclocked 10900K or the 10980XE, which was you're using, 
are representative of that heat load. And now we're finally starting to see where something like the Glacier 1240 can start to stretch its legs, while the 120 version gets pretty overwhelmed regardless of how fast its fan runs. The Glacier 280 also starts to pull ahead at least until its louder fans start getting in the way, which ends up equalizing results with a smaller dual fan radiator. It does have an extra gear though and maxes out at just 74 degrees. But man, that Glacier 1360 is a cooling beast with temperature they are a good 5 degrees cooler than the 240 at equal 38 decibels, and that's pretty amazing, but also remember it's a good $45 more expensive too. If all of these data points are a bit too much to consume, I've also broken them out at the normalized mid-level noise of 38 decibels. These results are a bit easier to see, but with the graph starting at the scale of zero, this also emphasizes just how little difference there is between the different sizes until you get some pretty insane heat loads. So make sure to pause if you want to take this in a bit longer. All right, so I think it's time to wrap things up. First of all, you can't assume these results will apply to the entire all-in-one space because even though they might be using the same Acetec design and pump, they might have different fans and so the temperatures might not really equalize across all the different sizes. But it's been a really good way to test out what Fantix is offering across the entire range and also I mean, we were really impressed at how well the 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler performs, and this is something that I was totally not expecting. Even if you're overclocking, a 240 AIO will be totally sufficient, I think, and if you're going with a slightly uh, larger size, then you're going to be bumping into the laws of diminishing returns. Unless you're one of those few people who has a really power-hungry CPU that can go at constant 200 watts, then going with a larger all-in-one cooler is going to be sufficient. Either way, I hope this video gave you a bit more confidence and maybe choosing a slightly lower price, slightly smaller all-in-one cooler, maybe in a smaller enclosure too, because bigger doesn't necessarily mean better in all scenarios, especially when you're talking about slightly lower wattage uh, CPUs, and I think that makes total sense. What I'm excited about is have this video as a kickoff for more water cooling and all-in-one cooler content and just cooler content in general so that we can compare everything and see which coolers are best at certain decibels and certain heat loads too. Again, huge thanks to Fantix for making this video possible. Check out this other relevant content. All the links would be listed in the description below. I'm Dimitri and I'll talk to you in the next video.